occupation. I have no idea what my occupation is. <laughs> I'm DJ Alex Kane. I'm a professional metal DJ. And I wanted to be a radio DJ. The drinking age was 18 in New York, so you were allowed to go out to clubs when you were 18 years old, which was a beautiful thing back then. I went to a club called Gatsby's, she said, babe. My girlfriend brought me there. She goes, well, you gotta meet the DJ. I know him, I'll introduce you to him. I said, all right. And he was doing stuff with records that I ain't never seen before. You know, he was back and he was juggling, he was scratching, uh, he was phasing, he was doing all, all kinds of stuff to records that I had never seen before. And the radio guy just pretty much just put the needle on and talks. So when I seen this guy do all these tricks and stuff, I'm like, that's what I want. I want to do that. <laughs> when I started DJing, disco was the dominant force in the world. 1978, 1977, disco was everywhere. Every club was a dance club. It was all over the airwaves. I started spinning dance music, which I also like too. I mean, you know, dance music is great too. So I started spinning that. I won a DJ battle in Brooklyn in a mixing contest. And that's how I got my start working in clubs. Just the buzz got around, you gotta hear this kid, he's pretty good. There was a club called Lamour in Brooklyn that became a famous metal club. In the very beginning, it was a discotheque. And my friend Mike was the DJ there, so I used to hang out with him. When the club started to turn to rock, he had no idea. I mean, he had some idea of what to play. He knew the big bands like ACDC and Zeppelin, but he didn't know the underground stuff. And I had already been digging into that stuff as a rock guy. He started to borrow my records. He said, bring me some rock records to play, because the club is turning rock. So I'd bring him some you know, stack of records and I'd tell him, play this, play that. He left to, he'd always wanted to become an owner. So he graduated from DJ to club owner, and he left to go run this club. And he said, hey, you want to you wanna, you know, do this? You, know, you already got a rock collection. You're already a professional DJ. Why don't you just take over? Take over for me. So I was like, oh, sure, yeah, why, why not? It's been my favorite music. And then the club turned from rock to metal, and then it became a famous metal place. Do you have any gigs that you played or people that you opened for yeah. that were underground at the time, but when you watched them, you knew that they were oh, yeah. going to do great? Yeah, Metallica, for sure. Um, there was something different about them from the beginning. In Metallica, I opened the show in 1983 at Lamore. And it was uh, the Rods and Metallica. There was just something different about them. They were louder, faster, and which is crazier than everybody else. You knew that they had taken it up a couple of notches, and that everybody else was going to have to follow, or they were going to fall off the railroad, and they were going to, you know, fall by the wayside. And uh, it was just an incredible thing to premiere some of those records. Johnny Z, you know, a dear friend of mine, I miss him very much, and his wife Marsha. Back in the day, Johnny ran a kiosk in a flea market on Route 18. If you were un in the, into underground metal at the time, Johnny was the guy to go to to get the newest records that were coming out. When he found out I was a DJ of the more, then that started a whole lifetime of friendship. When he got the Metallica cassette, he went to every record label in existence with that cassette and played it for them. And they showed him the door. Johnny believed and Marsha believed in the band so much that they took all the money they had. And that uh, that's how Megaforce Records was born. And then they became, uh, you know, they became a staple in the uh, metal community. The cool thing about it was I was in the right place at the right time. Because metal was growing up with more. We could think. The club and metal grew up together. And so I was fortunate enough to break a lot of the new bands that were coming over from Europe and that were forming because the, the the genre had started to grow. Right. People were scrambling like to form metal bands, you know. <laughs> it just got, got bigger and bigger. You'll go to a club that doesn't have a DJ and it'll be a metal night and the sound guy will put on Don Henley or he'll put on Taylor Swift and like, are you out of your, can I curse? Yeah, sure, I'll bleep it. <laughs> sure. Are you out of your mind? Like, what the <laughs> are you doing? The guy's playing Don Henley. So I went up to him, I went this one night, this guy puts on Don Henley at a metal show. And I went up to him and I said, what are you playing Don Henley for? He goes, I like Don Henley. That's the f answer? <laughs> it's a metal show. What are you, what's wrong with you? So I, I stay in the stained language. That's what people are coming there primed. They're pumped to hear. So if you have somebody in the, in the middle that knows what they're doing, it's a much more elevated experience. I don't like to be limited by any sort of boundaries. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I won't work on a commercial radio station. The commercial radio station, they tell you what to play. The DJ doesn't get to play what he wants. He's not playing what he wants. He's playing what they tell him. Don't be fooled. Okay? Yeah. <laughs>
One of the reasons why I do this is to make people happy. When you boil, when you boil down to its essence, you're making people happy. You're putting out a good vibe. You're, you're triggering their brain with a song that they might remember from a long time ago, and they forgot about it. So. That's why I like playing requests. I'll play whatever anybody asks me to play, I'll usually play it. So, because it makes them happy. If it's gonna put a smile on your face, I'm down for that. What's cool about working in shows is you get to play with people's emotions. You can take them on a journey. And so, that's, uh, that's the kind of thing that I, I enjoy doing. I enjoy taking people on a journey. Come to the Palladium, September 13th. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs>